Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. We've got multiple days of severe storms on the way as we break down the details for you over the next seven days to keep you well ahead of the storm. Let's zoom out and take a look at the big picture this morning. And here's the overall setup. It's what's called Northwest Flow. We've got a dominant ridge of high pressure building across much of the West and the Desert Southwest. That puts this heat ridge over this placement and also has a storm development likely east of the Rockies and they travel on the Northwest flow, bringing some severe storms and a lot of heavy rainfall. And that pattern looks to cons be consistent, at least for several more days. We do appear to have a little bit of a lull, but it comes back for next weekend. So right now we've got a lot of heat building across much of the West. In fact, they've got excessive heat watches for a good part of California, much of the desert southwest we do have a little bit of a cooler cooling pocket up here across the pacific northwest we are getting some heavier rains and some higher wind gusts for them but for those areas especially along the into the deep south the west texas deep deep south of texas all the way down along the i-10 i-20 corridor that heat indices is going to be cranking well into the triple digits as well as into much of florida in the week to come and for today we've got several systems first this first complex that traveled off the Northwest flow into the overnight hours continues over Wichita Falls this morning. In fact, they just upgraded to a severe thunderstorm watch yet again through five o'clock for more storm activity and heavier rainfall across that region. But it doesn't end there because we have yet another complex of storms that are going to be highlighted across this boundary, so essentially east of the Rockies there. New storm development highlighted across a areas of the Dakotas back through to, uh, Nebraska into, into Kansas going all the way down into western Oklahoma wet far west Texas that's where along the dry line and new storm development is going to be initiation after about six seven o'clock so that's exactly what the storm prediction center has in fact upgraded to an enhanced risk right where that low pressure is highlighted across Nebraska and that's likely where you're going to be seeing the more the higher probability if you are going to be seeing a, a spin up tornado or two that's the highest probability you're going to see one today but but overall, this is mainly going to be a high wind threat. So in the initial storms, we are going to be seeing some very high winds, upwards to 60, 70, 75 mile per hour. And also that hatched risk implies yet again, the atmosphere is capable of producing some of that more significant hail scattered two to possibly three inch variety up there at the Dakotas, back through areas of Nebraska, getting into Western Kansas, Western Oklahoma, and the, the Panhandle again into West Texas. And those will continue to dive off the Northwest flow weakening and as they do, They'll have a less wind threat, but a higher rain threat. So that higher rain threat shifts a little bit further to the east. So now we're talking areas mainly into areas of the Dakotas through, through a good part of Minnesota, as well as into Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, as well getting into Oklahoma. And then you have that first initiation with the severe thunderstorm watch and a second round that likely comes into the overnight for a good part of the Wichita Falls region into Childress, back into North Texas again. And those will continue to weaken going into areas of Louisiana. And that's just for today folks so but we're also concerned about some larger hail as these continue to move across so they are going to be blowing up essentially east of the Rockies there and there the initial storm initiation is going to be producing some larger hail so you have these series of what's called mesoscale convective systems and as they propagate through, they are going to have some larger hail associated with it, but definitely some higher winds as we've seen a lot of that as of yet lately. And you can't roll out some isolated spin up tornadoes or two, but this whole boundary is definitely under the gun for that severe storms and definitely some heavier rainfall over the next 24 to 48 hours. So we have that first squall line now where they literally just kind of upgraded to, a, to a, a, a severe thunderstorm watch across Wichita Falls into the dallas Fort Worth region into the Red River. But then there's that secondary boundary that likely forms into six, seven, eight o'clock tonight. So we're gonna have more heavy rain push through the Dakotas, back into Minnesota, back into areas 
Texas, a Western uh, Nebraska, Western Kansas, back into the panhandle again. And those will continue again off the Northwest flow. Sometimes they will bow out here and the bowing features is always an indication of some higher wind gusts are gonna be moving across that region. So this is an overnight setup again. So you have the storm complex right now this afternoon, the atmosphere reloads, and then the second series comes in into the overnight. So this is around two o'clock in the morning. We're gonna be seeing some heavier thunderstorms uh, impacting those areas into Minnesota, back into Western uh, Wisconsin, getting into Western Iowa by then, Eastern areas of Nebraska, Kansas, Eastern Oklahoma, and back into Central Oklahoma and right along the Rev River again, which Falls to North Texas, we are going to be looking at another squall line for heavier rains and some higher wind gusts to cross that region into the overnight hour. So this is what it looks like if you break these two systems down, kind of two rounds just for today, between the afternoon into the overnight hours, we are gonna be looking at some more significant winds, especially across Nebraska, swinging through Kansas, back into Western Oklahoma, and then far panhandle of Texas, those areas into Northwest Texas, getting into North Texas with those higher wind gusts, as these move across in these mesoscale convective systems uh, will be amplifying across that region. But going into tomorrow for your Monday, they are going to be leaving what they call an outflow boundaries. So you have the storm initiation pulls through and then they leave outflow boundaries. This basically sets the stage for the next round for severe storms, likely not as intense because the atmosphere is going to be worked over from the day before. But nonetheless, some stronger thunderstorms pushing back into the region of Illinois, back into Missouri, as well as into Oklahoma getting into Arkansas again, and yes, back into those areas in North and Central Texas and back into areas into Louisiana on Monday. And then there's the heavier rains that will push back into this region as well. So you have the initiation of the severe stuff on the front end, and then as it weakens, it kind of slows down with a heavier rain threat that pushes through areas of Missouri, western, uh, eastern Oklahoma, as well as into Arkansas and back into those areas across the Red River again. And it doesn't really end there because once we get into Tuesday, man, then we're going to be talking about the heat, right? So you got the heat dome. You know, the heat dome is building across much of the much of the west there with the ridge of high pressure, but it's also building in from Mexico for a good part of the south. And it's bringing those higher dew points that have just been sitting out there in the Gulf surging further north. So you're looking at some of the highest dew points we've seen so far this year, well into the upper 70s across this region and pushing 70s all the way into Iowa. So yes, we're going to be looking at some more heavy rains as these push across from west to east. And that sets the stage on Tuesday for a more heavier rain event across Minnesota, getting into Iowa, Missouri, as well as into Arkansas again. And then further south, you still have some heavier rains pushed through the pan pushed through uh, areas of north and central Texas as well. So it's going to be a wet week over the next, uh, you know, at least for the first three days. But on Wednesday, we start to see a little bit subtle signs of change and it's going to be temporary. So, but it is going to be bringing in, bringing the heat and what it's going to do it's going to temporarily shut off the northwest flow at least for a time being because this ridge of high pressure is going to be lifting further north so instead of you get the storm initiation we also have a cooler pocket of air with this a little bit more significant trough that's going to be diving from the northwest down to the southeast across the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic and that's going to bring some cooler temperatures and some some uh, you know light to moderate rain showers for them but it's also going to shut off the flow at least shut off the taps and at least a temporary manner for those areas that just been inundated as of late at least for the next three days but by wednesday that pattern is going to shut down because most of the activity is going to be sh shifting off more to the east so now it's going to be more in line for those areas across wisconsin getting into michigan back into illinois as well as into indiana get back into uh, kentucky is getting into uh, Tennessee, but much of the central and central and, and, and southern U.S. 
takes a break because they get shut off from the Northwest flow. And that just even you know persist as we head into Thursday, as the heat will likely continue to build across much of the West and the central US and put any storm initiation and not likely severe by then, obviously, but you still will get some light to moderate and some mixed heavy rains across the mid-Atlantic and the Eastern seaboard as this will continue to push off out into the open waters. And you've got a lot of the sea Sinking air that will be coming on the backside. So sinking air shuts off pretty much everything and much ridging pretty much shuts off everything as well. So they'll take the break. Believe me, they will take the break across these regions. They've been inundated with a lot of heavy rain as of late and a, a lot of severe weather that just doesn't want to quit. So at least for Thursday, you'll be taking that break and putting those rains across the eastern seaboard by then. But Friday, I think it starts to be the beginning stages of it winding down. So it's still there for Friday as that ridge of high pressure only just intensifies and pushes it through. So it might likely Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are your highest heat days and shuts off the Northwest flow while much of the cooler anomalies will be highlighted across the upper Great Lakes as well as into the Mid-Atlantic and getting into the Northeast with that cooler pocket of air. And that puts all the instability up up across that region as well but going into the weekend that pattern shuts down so the ridge of high pressure sneaks back into mexico so that that you know pushes back into mexico that's going to allow this trough to come back underneath back over the four corners regions and that is going to set the stage for again that northwest flow type setup as we head into next week. And overall, with that Northwest flow set up, yes, that's gonna bring more severe storms back onto, the, back onto the table as they would likely again initiate east of the Rockies again and put that severe weather aspect again along the dry line, form it across Western Kansas, Western Oklahoma, through the Panhandle again, and back into North and Central Texas. And I think that continues actually for much of next week through the mid-June. So we still continue to remain active on the severe weather front with that northwest flow, but we are going to get a little bit of a break once we get into the middle part of the week ahead. So guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you do hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and catch the next update. Wire protect you before and after storm.